want an exposure to a market or an Everything asset. Everything they need in one place. Be the world's foremost authority on ETLs, advisors and institutions. Today we're going to be talking about the work of APFA, the Association of Professional Financial Advisors, previously known as IEFA. I'm joined today by the Director General, Chris Hallett. Welcome, Chris. Morning, thanks for having me. Um, so to start off, could you give a sort of description of APFA? Well, APFA is the trade association for financial advisors. We're there to lobby the regulator, the government, uh, on behalf of our members to get a better business environment for, for advisors and doing their work. Okay. Um, so you've recently changed your name from IEFA to APFA. What was the reason for that? We wanted to continue to represent all our members. Uh, the change in definition uh, as a consequence of the RDR meant that some of our members would be restricted and some would be independent. We wanted to continue with all of them in membership, so we changed our name to reflect the representation of that broader church. So over the last couple of years, you must have been very focused on RDR. What kind of successes have you had in, the, in your lobbying? Yeah, RDR has been the biggest thing on our plate. Um, some of our recent successes include um, a reduction of mass fees this year by 1.6 million for advisors, um, an increase in the number of free cases for the ombudsman from 3 to 25, and we also persuaded the regulator to change the rules around FSCS funding so that if the levy th thresholds are breached, then we'll get support for the community from insurers and product providers. And going forward, is it still the RDR that you're focused on? What are your priorities? Yeah, RDR very much figures on um, our future. We're looking towards next year, there will be a review from the regulator about its success or otherwise. And obviously we're preparing our evidence and argument to make sure we get a good outcome for advisors. Um, other things include we're about to launch a campaign on a regulatory dividend from the RDR. And that's about, it's not about reducing standards, but it is about making uh, doing business for advisors easier. So reducing fees, um, introduction of a long stop and uh, reducing reporting requirements. Okay. And um, a large part of your role is sort of influencing people where you don't have direct authority necessarily to, um, to get your point across. How, what are your top, til top tips for influencing people? I think, I think there, are, there are two key things. One is you've got to make sure you've got your, your case watertight, and that is make sure all your evidence is together, that you get the data to support your argument. And the second is building a coalition, working with people who wouldn't necessarily naturally be allies. Um, but if they can support your case, then it makes a more powerful uh, argument with the regulator or government. So, for example, we, you know, we look to try and link up with consumer groups if we can, because if they're supporting uh, an argument that the advisors are making, then the regulator is going to sit up and take more notice. Okay. So, what are the kind of um, what are the partners for you? So, do you work with in, in conjunction with the IMA, etc.? Or we work with all the other trade associations in the financial services sector, so the IMA, the ABI, BBA, etc. But also, we have a dialogue with consumer groups and other people who've got an interest in getting, basically, a, at the end of it, a good result for for clients. What about political parties? Are you sort of in discussions with Labour, Conservatives, etc. Do they have a view? Of course, we, we, we talk to the government and obviously two parties are currently in government and we also speak to the opposition MPs because sooner or later they'll be back in government probably and I'm off to the Labour Party conference later today and we'll be visiting the Conservative one next week. Um, so you're going to the Labour Party conference, well, how are you going to participate, what are you going to be doing? Um, there's a round table event tonight, um, so there's a group of about 15 people being joined by the Shadow Pensions Minister Greg McClinmont and it's an opportunity to raise issues with him and discuss with the leading players in the industry um, topics around pensions. Chris, thank you very much. Thank you. For Morningstar, I'm John Standring. Thanks for watching.